Hello everybody, welcome back. And in this part we're going to be looking at creating a title screen for the game. Basically as an excuse to demonstrate how to move between different rooms. Okay, so I'm going to create a, a new room for the game, because at the moment we just have our one RM underscore game where everything takes place. We're going to make um, a title screen room, and we're going to just show uh, my first game, press enter to start on that screen. And I'm going to show you how to move between that room and the room with our game in it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just set up a couple of sprites that we're going to need. We're going to need um, a new sprite for the background of the uh, the title screen room. So I'm going to right click in sprites and hit create and just go to import. And I'm just going to bring in this tile I made earlier, bg underscore tile underscore dark. It's just uh, the exact same as sort of our, our background tiles only. It's just darker and uh, we're just going to use that. We're going to tile that across the, uh, the background of the title screen and just sort of scroll it around. Okay. I'm just going to name this SVR underscore dark tile. Okay, and close that. And I'm going to create another sprite. And I'm going to import. And this one's going to be for our main title screen. It's going to be sort of the object that, uh, well, you'll see in a second. It's going to be this. My first game, press enter to start. Um, just the image of our player character there. And that's what we're going to sort of show over the top. And we're going to just go, first of all go to the origin drop down box and just select middle center. Or if you want, you can manually type in 430 by 141. I recommend the drop down box. Um, you can see that puts our origin dead in the middle there, and that's what we're going to need. Uh, I'm just going to change the name of the sprite to SPR underscore title screen. Okay, and then close that. Now that we have those sprites, you'll see exactly how they get used uh, very shortly. Uh, we're going to create a new room. Okay, so at the moment we have our default room down here. I've changed the name of that to rm underscore game just to match with our uh, naming scheme. Um, and I'm going to create a new room. Right click and create just as with any uh, different resource. And I'm going to call it rm underscore title, I suppose makes some sense. Now it's created it under rm underscore game and game maker when you run your game it'll always run the game at the top of the uh, the room list first, okay? Um, the order at which you position your games after that doesn't necessarily matter because you can use code and move through them dynamically, but it's important which room is at the very top of your rooms list because that's the one that'll be run first. Now what we don't we don't want the the game room to be run first. We don't want this one running first. We want our title screen to be first. So we're going to click and drag it, and make sure you're careful when you drag because you don't want to drag it onto our underscore game. That would make it a child of that room, which is a, a powerful feature we might cover in another tutorial. But for now, we want to make sure that list line here appears so that we're definitely gonna when we let go of it reposition our underscore title above our underscore game. So if I run the game now, just to demonstrate, whereas before we had, it would just run our game and run straight into the game, it'll just bring us into a blank screen, it'll bring us into this empty room that we haven't set up yet, okay? So we're going to set that up now. I'm just going to go to the background layer that gets created for us by default and actually assign a sprite to that background. We're going to assign SPR underscore dark tile, the one we made before. Then I'm going to tick horizontal tile, and you can see what that does, and vertical tile, and you can see what that does, and then it's... Uh, covered our room if I turn the grid off just with this button here um, you can see it's just covered our room in this and uh, those will continue to tile in every direction and what I can also do down here where it says horizontal speed and vertical speed is uh, I can actually just give it a speed in a certain direction so that it will scroll automatically if I type minus one um, in here that means it's going to move one pixel to the left every single frame of the game okay and one of the cool new features in Game Maker Studio 2 is I can actually see that happening right away. If I just click this little play animation button in the top right, you can see it's you can see it scrolling around in real time without actually having to compile the game. So you can already get an idea of what that's gonna look like. I can like uh update this, I can like change it on the fly and see immediately how it's going to look. But I think just scrolling one just quietly over the left like that is quite a good look for that. Okay, and just so you can see that's working, let me just run that and show it's exactly what we expect to see. Okay, so what we're going to do now is actually allow us to move from this room to 
this room, okay, where our game actually takes place. And I'll also show our title screen on here. I'm just going to show my first game, press enter to start. And we're going to do that just using another object. So I'm going to right click in objects and hit create and close the room editor here now. Just move this over to the side so we can see. And uh, we'll call this obj underscore title. I'm going to assign the sprite to be this spr underscore title screen that we made a few minutes ago. Okay, and the first event I'm going to have in this object is just going to be the create event. Okay, let's just scale this up. We're not we're only going to type like one line of code per event for this object. So uh, we don't need the code window to be that large. Now get rid of the top line here. And the first thing I'm going to write in is image underscore alpha equals zero. What that does is it sets basically this object to be invisible more or less. Not quite the same as ticking the visible tag. Um, what this does is sets the alpha of our sprite to be zero, which means it's going to draw every single pixel as completely transparent, so you're not actually going to see anything. Now we can vary that number between 0 and 1. If we set it to 0 0.5, for example, uh, the image would be like 50% um, opaque, 50% transparent. And uh, yeah, so we can use that by, and what we're going to do is we're going to move that value from 0 to 1 slowly to just have it fade into the screen when we first start the game, okay? Just as a sort of nice little visual effect. So I'm going to start off by when we create this object, setting our image alpha to be 0. The other two things I'm actually going to do in here, so I lied, it's actually a couple of lines of code in this one. Um, I'm going to set x to equal room underscore width divided by 2, just so we make sure it's always in the center of the room, and y equals room height over 2, doing the exact same thing with the y corner, just so it's going to be um, half the room width and half the room height dead center of the screen, okay? And because we set the origin of that sprite to be in the middle, it means that when you know it, it's going to position itself neatly center aligned okay so now that we've done that let's go ahead and add the step event just the regular step event get rid of that and the first thing well the only thing i'm going to type in here is image underscore alpha equals uh, min now what min does you can see i can put a number of different values into this um for every value you give it, it will pick the smallest one, okay, and it will return that. So what I'm going to do is say image underscore alpha plus 0 0.02, and then comma or 1. So it's going to return whichever number is smaller. It's current image alpha, which is currently 0 when we make the thing, um, plus a very small amount, or 1. It's going to take one of those two values, whichever one is smaller. So that means we're basically going to keep increasing uh, our image alpha by 0 0.02 until it gets to 1 or to be over 1 in which case it'll just set it to 1. It's just it's just a way of increasing a value over time and making sure it doesn't go over a certain amount. You can do the same thing going the other way by using max as well um, which as you might imagine just does the opposite thing and returns whichever is larger out of two values. But that's just going to slowly increase our image alpha until it hits 1 or 100%. Okay, so let's just quickly demonstrate how this works. Um, let's go into arm underscore title now. Let's quickly broom back the uh, the layer view. So and go to instances and drag in obj underscore title. I can put it anywhere because we made sure in our uh, create event it would automatically put itself in the center. I mean, you could just place it roughly in the center, but. I'm going to place it up here just so we can see those lines of code actually working. So now when I run the game, you see it just neatly fades in there, as opposed to just appearing off the bat. Okay, just a nice little visual effect. Now let's go back to uh, obj underscore title. Let's close this again. And uh, okay, the only thing we want to do now is make it so that when we press the enter key, we actually start the game, okay? So I'm going to add the key up event, and I'll explain why in a second, enter. So the key up event is triggered on the frame when a key is released, okay? So it's not going to start the game the moment we push down on the enter key, uh, when the player may or may not be ready, you know, but it's when they actually release the enter key that's when the game will start. That's the difference with the uh, the key up event rather than the key down or pressed event. Okay. Now there's literally one line of code that we need to put in here. It's really really simple, and uh, this is really the crux of the tutorial. That's all it really comes down to. Room underscore go to underscore next. 
Okay, that what that line of code does, you might imagine, it sends you to the next room. So it's going to look to see where it is in the current room order, and it's going to send you to the next room in the list, which is rm underscore game. What you can do instead is you can use room underscore go to, and then give it a nip like type in rm underscore game, type the name of the room that you wish to go to into the function if you want to go to a specific room. Um, there's all sorts of other things like room restart, so you can just like reset the room you're currently in, and so on and so forth, room go to previous, and you know, various functions like that. But the ones you'll be making the most use of are probably room go to and room go to next for the most part, okay? And that's really all there is to it. So if I run the game now, and that nicely fades in there, and press enter, and you can see it actually starts up our game. And if I die, the game restarts, and we come back to here. Okay, and there you have it. That's how you make a simple functional title screen, and that's how you move between rooms in your game. Hope that's been useful. I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, guys.